Page 32, Nocturne Opus 55, number 1. Starting with the right hand, I want to cover a few things. At the beginning, they're saying thumb. We can use their fingering for the most part. I have some suggestions. But this idea of playing this and tying it is important throughout this piece. It's like you're announcing it and then it begins. That dotted rhythm in this, the last measure of the first line, make sure that's a dotted rhythm and not triplets. Uh-uh, not triplets. It's got to be crisp. And I recommend the fingering for it is the, the B is thumb and you come over, second finger, and leave your hand in this position. So use third on the next B and then four on the C. And then you just reach up with a little finger to go on. And I recommend the same fingering for these notes in this pattern throughout the piece. Second line. Thumb on the first one. And then two, three. And you end up with that. Now you can end up with one if you'd like. On the half note. I mean, it's up to you. The next note is with fourth finger, the E. Last line on page 32. And for the two E's I recommend a 1-2. It's a little easier on these quick notes. Don't forget the F sharps, it's all over the place. Let's go on to page 33. You're here. It is 3-4 on the two G's. It's a different phrase, lift up. This leads into here. Go to here. It's a pickup beat. The fourth finger. And then the second line. E sharp. Their fingering is okay, and sometimes you have to do this G to F sharp. We don't have to do it here, though, because I can just stay there. Use here, and then reach up. If you can reach this, if you can do that, okay. Otherwise, you're pretty much stuck with the thumb there, I think. I mean, there's other ways of doing it, but they're just as awkward in other ways. So I'll leave that up to you, whether you use thumb there or two, but the B needs to be played with third finger. So however you do this other stuff, get a third finger on that B. And it's legato, so you're connecting it all with the fingers. And then the D sharp, you play it with fifth finger and immediately substitute the fourth four, finger for it. So you can go, even though it's a phrase, we're going to feel the legato in this line here. Although you're going to lift up. Third line. Follow these slurs. I don't like using the same finger on these repeated notes. And that just complicates it more, so I won't say it's set. I won't suggest anything today. Last line. Now we get these. I like this fingering. Five for the B's. Five, three, one. We're just getting ourselves in position to, because it's like it was at the beginning. Top of page 34. You're here. Watch these triplets and work this out really slowly with the fingers. You can forget the rhythm at first. Just get the notes and the fingering. It's here for the triplets. Reach down. That's a stretch. But try and do it if you can. If your hand's not that big, then you have no choice but to move that. But make this as legato as you can. And now for this part, they're saying 2-5, and then come up another fingering you can try. 
And we do this a lot with Chopin and Liszt, and we spread out sometimes. So that second measure there at the top of page 34, you're here, reach down, two, three, if your head's big enough, four, five, four, and then substitute the one, because I can get it all. I'm not trying to cover all these notes at one time. I'm, the hand's kind of flowing up as I'm doing this. See? I may get off of that and get up here, and then come up here. Like so. Experiment with it and see what you think. The pedal will help connect it, but again, we try and do it with the fingers if we can. And then we're back to what we were doing at the beginning. They're saying fifth finger on the E. I disagree. I just used the same fingering you've been using. Use fourth finger. This is the second line on page 34. And then cross over with third finger on the A. And that now you're in position. Watch their fingering. It's fine there in the third line. Again, we've had this before. So the beautiful thing about this is when they keep repeating these musical themes, once you've worked it out once, you got it for the rest of the piece. And it has the effect of shortening the piece just a little bit as far as learning it goes. Over on page 35, we, third line down, we have these triplets again. This is what we had at the top of page 34. So if you can work it out there. had all the rest of that before for the right hand. The left hand is going to be soft and supporting throughout this because the melody and everything is in the right hand. That's what we want. So the left hand just keep it soft at the beginning on page 32. All connected. If you can, just play it all legato with the fingers. line there on page 32 look out now this the first four notes there in that line it's a chord it's a G7 chord and a fourth finger goes on the B so a fourth not third then you can do one three five coming down and then one two three not four because this makes it easier for us to reach the D sharp if you use third finger on the D then the last measure that at the bottom of page 32 the first ending it's 5-3-1 I recommend a 4 on the E and that way you can go here and then we repeat it again if you want to use 4-2-1 when you repeat at the top the first one if you want to use 4-2-1 that's fine because you just came off of this and you go here or 5-2-1 is fine you slide off Let's go on. Page 33, you're here. Lovely, ain't it? Love it. Just gotta love it. If you don't want to put a thumb on that, you have to adjust your fingering and use second finger on the C sharps. So the last measure of the first line, you can do a five, two here, and then go, same thing. A sharp, and then drop down. Now on page 34, really is continuation of what we've already had, and 35 is continuation of what we've already had. So if you can work it out on 32 and 33, the left hand shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. There's a couple of little spots I want to point out. Like, uh, oh, where did it happen? It was top of page 35, first line, last measure. On this, you have a D sharp there. That's for the rest of the measure. So when you play it again, make sure you play it a D sharp again when it happens. And then it's here. It's a C, E, B flat. 
they're saying this. Problem is, if I use third finger here and use third finger again, it doesn't work real well. If I use fourth finger, then I can do it. It still is awkward. So I recommend here you use a 4 2 1 on that C E B flat. There. This happens previously in another measure. I'm too lazy to go find it, but you go find it and just pencil in that fingering. That's what I recommend. Then go put the hands together. Shouldn't be too much of a problem because the left hand is pretty straightforward, so you can focus more on the right hand. Just keep the left hand soft. So the last line on page 32, here. tend to hesitate. It's, it's, it's almost like a just a slight retard there. There's none written in, but it's an interpretive thing. Because the B is held down, the last note at the bottom of page 32 that's held down. You see that line going off into nowhere? It's tied to that B at the top, so it's here. And when you lift the le left hand up to go on, the B stays down. So it's a nice effect. And then you do it all again. At the top of page 33, you're here. So we're building intensity here. Now it's loud. This is like, okay, this is sort of the climax of this part of it. See, now we're going back to the original C because you're holding that down as you do these B's, you're preparing that. Now you're here. And then at the top of page 34. Again, work this out very slowly. Get the notes. Just work it out carefully at the, on each beat. When the left hand plays that quarter note, make sure your right fingers are on the right notes. You can forget the rhythm for a bit if you need. Just Then we're here, right there. Next one is here. Get that one. Then here. Right there. way and then go over and over and over and you can gradually put the rhythm back in and slowly speed it up to where it's a little more playable and just parts of pieces like this take more work than other parts of pieces so, and so you spend time on it. This has to flow. It can't sound like you're struggling with it, and it will at first because you're struggling with it. So you got to get it to where it just it, it, it's like you're improvising here. A lot of Chopin feels like um, sounds like that. He's just improvising. He probably was, but he wrote down his improvisations, and now we've got it here. It's something like that. Like so, so. Get it out of the finger so it's comfortable. Just go over and over and over and over and over until it's comfortable. Then go on. Second line. You're holding this down. We've had this before. Some more of that. 
Over on page 35 is simply more of what you've already had. I don't feel I really need to go play it all again for you because we need to talk about the pedal and the rhythm and a little bit of interpretation. I don't want this video to last an hour or so. Let's put all that together and I'll kind of go through it and talk about all the rest of that stuff in one shot. Good luck trying to keep up, but we'll see. See, when I learn these pieces, I like to do it just one thing at a time. You know, I get the, the fingering and the notes and the rhythm worked out. And then I can go back and I put the hands together and try and get it worked out. And then I'll usually go back and I'll put in the phrasing and maybe the dynamics and get that worked out. And then I go back and I add, I just add an, a thing each time because my brain works better that way if I just take one thing at a time. But with these videos, because you can watch the video more than once, then you can concentrate on one thing one time you're watching it and concentrate on something else the next time you're watching it and you can get through it that way. Now at the beginning of this, this is soft. The right hand, you keep the left hand very soft. Keep the left hand out of the way. We want to hear the right hand. And if this is soft, the left hand is... Yeah, okay. Pedaling it wise, for the most part, you can pedal it like they're telling you to. I want to make a few suggestions. The first line here, you're starting out fine. You're pedaling it every two beats. This is overlapping pedal, all legato pedal here. Now the next line, this, any measure with this in it, I'm pedaling each beat of that. So the, I'm pedaling each of the first two beats. Here and here. I don't want all of this. I don't want all of that in one pedal. This has to be gentle. Hmm? So it's here and here and here. You can pedal the last two beats okay together. That's fine. But the first two beats have to be separate. So the first line is this way. Softly. the same way. In the third line, pedal the first two beats, and then change the pedal on the next two beats, here and here. And then two beats, and change the pedal here. And just try not, I don't want it to get too blurry. So if I can, I'll leave the pedal down for two beats, but if things are changing in the melody or whatever, then I've got to change it with each beat. So at the bottom, the first inning, you're here. And I pedal it with the right hand on those Bs. I want, I want a little silence between them because the phrase starts with the pickup B, and I want to hear that. So I have to pedal it with that, so it's here. left hand can stay down if you can figure out how to finger it legato. So to play the first ending and repeat it, it's that. And then... Again, I'm pedaling it with the right hand because I want to hear this some silence between those two G's. So it's a new phrase. So now here it's every two beats in here. And again, the end of the first line there with the two beat, the last two quarter notes. I want silence between them. I'm going to pedal it with them. See, we, uh, we started getting louder up above that we're building an intensity, so this is it. The right hand is loud. Keep the left hand under it. Now, they're phrasing it. I 
I find that a little, I, I don't care for that phrasing, so I tend to run those phrases together so it's, it's all one f sentence. So it's the last measure of the second line is here. This starts a phrase, but now I run it together. So it's all legato pedaling. Every two beats. Now, last line, first measure. I'm pedaling on this, I change pedal on the second beat. I want to clean this out. Now, what you can do to, to because it has a decrescendo there to help you out, is you leave the pedal down. And all I did is I just very quickly raised the pedal up on the second or on the third beat. To, I lose a little sound, not all of it, because this quick motion like that, it's, it's almost like a flutter pedal, but it's, it's the dampers come off the come hit the strings just briefly and it deadens the sound a little bit but it doesn't completely kill it is what I'm saying so it's here and then I want silence between the last two quarter notes in that measure so the pedal comes up with it so it's here and then go on on Before we go to the next page, I want to talk a little bit about inter uh, interpretation. When I studied this, my teacher said you got to find a way to change this because it happens a lot in this nocturne. Don't always play it the same way. That gets boring. It gets meh. So, it, interpretive wise, you have to you can change the dynamics a little. You can rush it a little or pull back this rubato. So each time you do this, try and feel it a little differently. You have to experiment. So whatever you th your imagination comes up with, you can't violate what the music is telling you to do, but interpretive wise you can feel it a little differently each time so it doesn't sound the same is what I'm getting at. Now at the top of page 34, here I'm going to pedal it with each beat through these triplets here. starting to crescendo a little bit I don't pedal the 16th notes I lift it up on that one so it's the second measure second line is pedal it here change lift it up and then at the third line I'm pedaling it with the two six to two G's, so we get a little silence between them. It's a new phrase. And we're going to start building up again. We've had this already. See, at the top of page 35 where it says diminuendo, dim, you're still out there. That doesn't mean all of a sudden you're soft. It means now you're going to start getting softer and you don't get soft until the second measure of the next line. We've had this before. A little softer. A couple of things. The last measure of the first line in the left hand, watch out. That second D is also a D sharp and then a C. Careful there. I think I covered that before. I just, it bothers me. And then the first measure of the next line. I've had this before. Lift the pedal up so the last two quarter notes have a little silence between them. And then you're starting again. Here, whatever that is. I 
don't pedal the 16th notes. And I get softer on those 16th notes because in the next measure you're soft and I don't like the, the sound in this piece of suddenly being soft. It's like it would be like this, the last line if I'm No. So I get softer in the 16th note. I come down there. And the molto retardando is slow down a lot. And then at the end, you let the keys up and then slowly lift the pedal up and the sound dies away. It's a nice effect. 